Mark Alford is the Republican now representing Missouri's 4th Congressional District and one of nearly 80 new House members in the 118th Congress. He told C-SPAN about his conservative roots growing up in Texas and his life as a television reporter in Texas, Florida, and Missouri before running for office. For 35 years, I was in the news media. I'm a recovering reporter, you might say. Uh, I knew from the age of uh, nine that I wanted to be a storyteller, a professional storyteller. So everything I did was geared towards that. Uh, in high school and college, my first uh, TV job in uh, covering the Texas State Capitol uh, as a political reporter for a CBS affiliate in Waco. Um, I was in several major television markets, Houston, Dallas, covering politics. I never thought that I would actually be in politics someday, but I know now that this was God's calling for me, that he gave me these talents that I honed over 35 years, and now I'm able to put to use for the American people in our district more importantly. How did you know that at age nine? My uncle was an anchorman uh, quite famous in Oklahoma City, and I always looked up to him. I admired him. Uh, one of my other heroes at a very uh, young age was Walter Cronkite. And then another hero of mine was Johnny Carson. And I'm kind of a, I guess, a amalgam of those three individuals, their styles, their interview uh, uh, adaptations, uh, their, uh, I guess, some, some ways mannerisms. But it's just, a, it's, it's about communication. And uh, as a professional communicator all those years, um, I was able to take part in a lot of interesting stories. I was able to interview a lot of interesting people. Uh, I did a short internship at the White House in 1989 uh, with, uh, when President Reagan was there and Bill Plant was CBS. And uh, I just, I knew that I wanted to do something other than TV at, at, as we got into it. I didn't know what, and this is really a gift from God that I'm able to do this. What did those men do in your, in your opinion that you wanted to do as well? I mean, what, how, did they, mm. how did they impact you? as a kid and as you were growing up? I think communication and television is a combination of things. It's not just information, it's entertainment. And a lot of times when you're in television news, you look at entertainment as a dirty word. Entertainment's mainly to keep someone engaged. And that's what I wanted to do, and I do that in public speaking as well, to keep people engaged so that you can con convey ideas and try to really sway people to your point of view in a lot of ways, not necessarily in the journalism field, but now in politics. When you are engaging with someone, you're really trying to convince them that your way is right and perhaps they need to look at it a different way, and that's, that's what I'm doing. You called yourself a recovering reporter. <laughs> what did you mean? Well, I think uh, I have seen over my career in television and in journalism, um, journalism kind of take a, a turn. I think that came about uh, with the advent of cable. I remember when I was in high school and college, uh, CNN came on to the scene, Bobby Batista, and at first it was very neutral. Uh, cable news over the years became uh, more slanted in a lot of ways because they had so much time to fill. Uh, when we were back and I was growing up, we had maybe one or two hours of news to fill a day, and now we have 24 hours of black to fill. And so you have to fill it with something. And so. I think cable news figured out early on that the most strident voices that were really out there brought in the viewers, that brought in money, and it kept the audience growing. And as that happened, uh, it kind of rarefied to one way or the other, uh, far left or far right, and I think that's where we are today. And we need to get back to the middle. We need to have uh, some sort of reform in journalism, and I know that the government can't have any part in that uh, because it's not constitutional. but. I do think we need to get back in journalism and just telling stories, not being an advocate for one side or the other, but just telling the truth. Why did you decide to run for this seat? I was frustrated. Early, uh, a couple of years ago, I really started getting frustrated with the way that the news was going. As a lifelong conservative, I was always fighting from the inside to try to bring balance, context, and perspective to our news product. I really felt like I had a fiduciary responsibility that the viewers weren't just viewers, but they were clients, and I had to give them the truth no matter what. The longer I did that, the more I did that, and I was pretty well read, um, watched a uh, great consumer of news, and so I was able to, to add things to our news product over five hours a day 
24,000 hours of live television over 23 years. And so I, I, I was frustrated. And when this seat opened up, Vicki Hartzer, my predecessor, a great woman, uh, decided to run for the U.S. Senate. My wife and I talked about it. And we thought this is where really God was leading us to be a voice for the people. And I, I say the biggest miracle, I think a bigger miracle than Moses parting the Red Sea was that my wife agreed to this. <laughs> and she is on board 100%. Uh, in fact, she's coming up tonight. Uh, she, she loves being a part of this journey that we're on. Where do your conservative roots come from? I think mostly my dad. In fact, I don't have it with me today, but I typically carry around my dad's copy of the Constitution. He gave it to me before he died, and it's underlined like a little old lady's King James Bible with all these notations. I had it on the floor uh, the morning that we were finally sworn in, I think at 1232, uh, and I held it in one hand with my other hand over my heart, kind of an, an homage to him. Um, he really taught me, I think, the principles of what the Constitution is, is as the basic foundation of our country. And we need not stray from that to have liberty and freedom and security. Are there other notes in that Constitution from him? Yes. Any that stand out to you? Accountability. It's written on the top. If there's anything I want to be is accountable to our voters and uh, live up to the, the honor that they have placed in me. I think one of the odd things that uh, I'm still trying to get used to is on letterhead and everything, it says the Honorable Mark Alford, and I almost laugh at that. But then I realize the honor is not placed in Mark Alford. The honor is placed in this seat. And I'm merely a steward of this seat, just like Vicki Hartzer was, and before her, Ike Skelton. And there's going to be someone after me. But in the meantime, I'm going to do the best that I can to be the loudest, strongest, most consistent, unwavering voice I can be for our voters, our constituents, and really all of the 4th Congressional District.